everybody. How is everybody this evening? I hope you are all well and that it is so nice to have so many of you online that we can uh, are participating in this event. It's kind of fun for me because although this is the third time we are doing this, it is so exciting to do this within, in this type of a format because this was never possible before. And I am enjoying being the, the center of attraction for the moment. I am going to get you all healers to be with you in this evening. And um, when the healers are with you, which I will come back as soon as we get them all distributed. And um, then you, can, you will know that you have a healer with you. If you want to send healing to anyone that you know, feel free to just ask your healer to please heal that person right along with you or persons you can ask, send them out. They are quite capable. They can take care of many people at once. So feel free to uh, send your healer or, uh, to take care of other people also. Okay, I'm gonna get them now. One moment, please. All right, all the healers have been dispensed. Oh, there's something I, I thought that might be somewhat interesting for you who are online. You will notice that I do not open up the medium's eyes. Um, I don't know why I don't do that, but I don't do that. And so, um, but when Rankar comes in, he often keeps her eyes open. So it might look a little bit funny with her sitting here with her eyes shut, but um, it doesn't make any difference. We're with her. It's just that it takes extra energy to keep do things like move her hands and uh, to open her eyes and do things with the body. And why why put ourselves through that kind of extra energy transfer when it isn't necessary for the uh, for the channeling session? So um, I'm going to get Rankar now because. He's always a good person to start with, but if you have questions for anyone else, you can just ask. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. Good evening, it is I, Rankar. It is my pleasure to speak with you in this evening. And so as this is, the title of this program is Ask Anything of Spirit. I am ready for questions. If you would like, I can give you a little talk about something that is going on. But do people have questions who are waiting? Well, no one has spoken up, so therefore I will speak. And it is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. You have been all through a long time of you have called it social distancing. This is for the purpose of not spreading a disease. In other words, uh, by, not, by refraining from contact with other individuals, you will not bestow any uh, bacteria or viruses that may be part of, uh, may be with, residing within you, causing symptoms or not causing symptoms. And therefore, you would, sorry, there were. I am sorry. There was distraction going on. And therefore, you might be communicating these bacteria or these viruses, these germs to other individuals. The purpose is very noble that you separate yourself from others. However, it is causing great difficulty for each and every one of you is staying at home. And this is important because you are not spreading germs, but it is also a hardship for you all. First of all, you need social contact with one another. And it's important during this time that you get in communication with other individuals, particularly those in your family members and among your friends. 
just because you are not seeing them, that you cannot visit together in the same room in the same space. It is important to remember that communication and sharing and getting together expressions of love are helpful to everyone at this time. And so you need to take care of your own emotional needs, meaning that you be in contact with others, but you also take care of others' emotional needs by being in contact with them. It is a sharing. Not everyone will think to make that connection and be thoughtful in that way, but there is no reason why you cannot make the effort to be in contact with others. You might do yourself very good, as well as others, to decide to make at least one phone call a day to a friend, a family member, and to have a nice little chat over the telephone. Or there is, within your phones, there is something, um, oh, I am finding out that it is only uh, in certain types of your cell phones. It cannot always be done. A face-to-face -face message with one another, it helps to cement your uh, friendship and your love with others when you can spend this time together. It is also important that you uh, keep your mind active. When you feel limited in the things that you can do, you may not think of activities that you can do. You may decide that, oh, I will just sit and watch television. Or you may decide that I will um, go on to the computer and read all the Facebook messages that I have not read for months. These are things that is true, activities that may keep you somewhat engaged, but they are not really truly stimulating. It is a good time to decide to learn something new, to study something, to work at something new, to try to learn a new skill by yourself. This exercises your brain. It keeps, it will make your time go by much faster than just sitting in the vegetative state while others uh, entertain you in some way or another. And so I hope you will take these suggestions so that you can profit from this time off. Of course, it is always a good time for you to do chores or repairs around your own home. You can't really help others at this time because you are supposed to stay home. But at least you can do things around your own top home. And you are allowed to go out to buy some supplies and do things that you need. You just must be careful. They have asked you to wear masks or other insulating equipment to keep you separated from others. But there is no reason why you can't set yourself to work doing many interesting things. And so, now that I have spoken a little bit, how about you? Does anybody have a question they would like to ask? I do, Ron Karth. This is Elaine. I've always heard about spirit guides, but never could figure out what my, mine are. Do you have any idea? Oh, so you want to know the name of a spirit guide? Yes, please. That is fine. I can look that up for you. Normally, we would have one to do that at the end of the session. But okay. as you were the first one who have asked, I will do it for you now. One moment. There are several different guides. You know, each person has, has uh, several. One of them is called your joy guide. She, as her name implies, tries to help you in what other, whatever ways that she can to create happiness and joy and love in your life. So you have your joy guide, you have your doctor of philosophy who helps you with business and relationships, and you have a doctor of medicine who tries to keep your physical body in good health by um, helping you find right therapies, influencing you to do right things and eat right foods. 
they try as best as they can when they cannot be in the physical. And um, there is a protector. Um, they are not always very vocal. So um, while they are useful to know, um, they will not hmm, probably give you much communication since their job is merely to make sure that you are safe. And you will probably not even know that they are functioning well. So which one of these guides would you like to have the name of? Um, the joy, jo the, joy one. Mm -hmm. The joy guide, of course, that is the best one. <laughs> well, I am the best one, but I am not a personal guide. I am a guide to this circle and this group of people, to anyone who has come to listen to channeling from the medium. One moment, please, and I will find your joy guide's name. And this is Elaine. Elaine, would you give me your last name, please? Matson. Matson. Ah, oh, yes. One moment, please. Well, I have found your joy guide. Um, she has chosen a most different name for herself. She wishes to be known as Jupiter. And she informed me the reason she does this is because Jupiter is the biggest planet that there is and is a big influence in your life in many ways. And she wants you to know that she is a powerful, little thing, even though she is not very large or very old, but she says she is very strong and powerful, and she wishes to be known as Jupiter. So you may call on her and ask her questions. You may ask her to find things for you. You may ask her all kinds of things, and she will endeavor to, to give you the answers that you will desire. Now, you will hear those answers come into your head sometimes. It will be almost a direct communication, but you have to be willing to accept that what you heard is the truth um, of what, and this is coming from your joy guide, because you will most probably think it is coming from your own imagination. However, you may also get your answer from the mouth of someone else, and knowing that you have asked the question, and the answer has suddenly been given to you in an ordinary conversation with someone else, then you too will know that you have received your communication and the answer from Jupiter. Are there other questions? Thank you. You are welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I was wondering, um, a lot of religions have taught us that God knows everything and everything we do in this life that he already knows we're going to do it. Yes. Now, if that's the case, how does free will come in? Yes, I could sense that was the question you were going to ask <laughs> as soon as you started talking about how God knows everything. You may have heard of something called the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are the the recording of time from the beginning of time, which you might cause to, call, mm, how do I wish to say it? We will say that from the birth of the universe, but why not start just from the birth of the earth plane? Since you are on the earth, it, you would be most interested in that which is recorded for life on earth. So, the record of everything that has ever happened from the beginning of time until the future is already recorded. Now the future is not recorded the same way as the past. There are movements, there are energies that are being created at this moment in this time. And from this moment and this time, and I will always be speaking from the moment and time in which the medium is while these questions are going on, there are many things which are already decided in the future. 
Many of you have things you know you will be doing as soon as you are released from social, the social distancing. There are many things you know you will be doing next year, perhaps for your birthday or for Christmas. So there are always plans that are made well in the future. And many of these plans are quite permanent. They have been made and in all probability, they will take place, although they are always subject to some unexpected changes along the way. Now, there are very general plans also for the future years. Your businesses, your politicians, everyone, everyone on the planet is thinking what they would like to have occur in the future. Now, all these thoughts do create the future as it will be manifested. And it is this amalgam of thoughts which will truly create the future that you will experience. So God is the first creator. He is the manifester. But he is also present in each one of you because everything in this creation was made from the substance of his being. He brought it forth from himself. So everything in the universe is an aspect of God. And you, being the creators that you are on the planet Earth, are busy creating. Therefore, as God, you are creating your future and the future of all the people on the planet. You all get together to create it together, independently. But it is your thoughts, your actions, your ideas, which actually shape how the future will be coming. And so just as you know what tomorrow will bring for yourself, perhaps you have already decided what you will eat for breakfast, lunch, and supper, what you will be doing through your day. And you will certainly have made many plans for what you promised to do within this week or what you have decided that you will do for this week. These are all creating the future. And you know this, so God knows this, because you are God. I am God, we are God, and together we all work to create what is in that future. Now you have that question of futures with psychics. What is the psychic going to say about your future when you go for a reading? What are they going to see? Well, many of your thoughts and many of your actions have already set up certain vibrations to bring, bring about and manifest certain things in your future. Those things which are most strong and most probable is what the psychic may or may not pick up on to see and to experience and to share with you about what you are doing and what is most probable to happen. These are all subject to change because you change. You change your mind. But in a sense, you already know what you want to do. You know what you want your future to be. And while many things you do not know and you do not understand, you still know many things about the future. So therefore, this is how God knows about the future. He has created it. He has manifested it forth. He gave it a certain plan, a certain way of being, a certain manifestation of its own, and he empowered it to move forward. And he empowers, as we are part of this creation, he empowers us to also shape this creation. So that is what free will is about. If you don't like the way your future looks at any one moment in time, you can take the actions to change it. And he will be aware that you will change it or that you may probably change it because he is always part of you. And he can sense and will know that part of you that says, I do not want to continue in this track. I want to make things different. 
I want to experience things different. And this is how I will make things different. And so your free will can cause the change that is coming in your future. Did any of this make sense to you? Somewhat. I, I can understand us changing because we don't know what's going to happen. But before I change my mind, just even know I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? And suppose you plan on doing something in a day and then other things happen and, you know, something, now you got to do something else. I mean, does he know all this is going to happen? You are part of the mind of God. Everyone is part of the mind of God. It isn't as you know life, of course, on this planet, on earth, in this three-dimensional world. You have ideas, you work in your head. Uh, you have emotions. You have uh, all these thoughts which are constantly changing and moving around in your head. This is going on for everyone. There are many things. It, it, it isn't a question of knowing, such as, you know that the medium will be here next week and that I will be speaking to her next week. Now this could change. Many things could happen between now and next week, but it is written already. And this is the knowledge that many of you already know that this program will again be sponsored next week. And so this knowledge is known. It is not a decision that will change by any one thought necessarily, but by many thoughts that will bring about a change in this. So it is just different. The way you are thinking of God, you are thinking of him in a very limited way. And it isn't the words that you are choosing to think about. You are using these words in a limited way to be literally to mean tomorrow or a minute from now or an hour from now. And you are saying, I don't know what I am going to do an hour from now. Oh. And so therefore, you... You are thinking that God is making decisions, and he is not. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> wow. You He's are making, making decisions. decisions. I'm making decisions. Yes. yes. And all your rest of the millions of humans that are on the planet are making decisions. But yet it's all written down somewhere as to what we're going to do and where we're going to go and... No, it is not written down somewhere. It is there already set up, um, already set as a probability. Ah, probability, that's different. It's okay. a probability. And the probability is that this will happen tomorrow and something else will happen the day after. The probability is that you will become a grandmother again. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Do you want to say? Yes, everything is possible. Everything is possible because it is a dynamic, fluid engagement. And when you look in the Akashic records into the future, what you are seeing, and so what is in the mind of God, is the vibration that is cast forth by many millions, billions of people about the planet and what they want and all their different regions and everything that is taking place all over the earth. These are all shaping that particular environment around those individuals. And so that the future is probable and you still have the free will to change it. Okay, so as all the people in the world change, then the records change. Yes, that is true. Oh, okay. Now I got it, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, just do not think that it is something that is written in stone or brick and mortar or any other solid thing. 
Okay. They are like ideas. They can be changed. They can be modified until they come into manifestation and move into the past. Wow. Okay. Thank you. You are most welcome. And I would like to even make it more difficult for you if you do not mind at this time. It's but okay. it is even possible to change the past for yourself and only for yourself. The reason being that the, what you experience in every day is your perceptions, how you view the actions that are happening at the moment, the judgments you are making. This determines what you think is happening. Now, a year from now, if you go back and this was an, if this was an important day for you or a significant conversation or something had taken place, you would have interpreted it in one way. But a year from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, and you were to look back at this conversation in this moment, you might understand it in a different way because you had changed, you had grown. And so for you, that which happened in your past has changed. Now this happens many times for young adults and even older adults. As people mature and they change because they are now handling different situations, perhaps they are now married, they are now parents themselves, and something happens with their children and they find themselves reacting in such a way that they realize that this is how their parents reacted and this is what their parents was thinking. While a child might think the parent was being arbitrary about permitting or not permitting him to do something that he wanted to do, he suddenly understands once he is a parent that, ah, this is how a parent thinks and now I understand what was going on with my parents and my family oh so long ago when I was a child. And so the past changes because he has a different viewpoint on what has happened in his past. So when you experience something and you are unhappy about it, and you have thoughts that make you more unhappy about it. It is always possible to change these situations in your own mind because you change your judgments and your ideas on what was happening at this time. And so you change the past for yourself. So you are capable of changing the moment through your actions right now. You are capable of changing the past by revising what you think about things that happened in your past. And you revise the future by simply changing your mind and your actions in such a way that you create a different future for yourself. You are all powerful. Are there other questions? Uh, yes, I was, I have been um, finding myself being drawn to pursue a new life's path. And I was just wondering if this is something that I should be doing and I'm being called to do it. Well, you have just told me you are being called to do it because you are finding yourself in drawn was the phrase I believe you used. Um, so you have been thinking, if I'm interpreting what you said properly, you have been contemplating the life that you have been living. And one of the interesting side effects of this social distancing is that it does give you more time to contemplate what you are, who you are, what you want. And you can consider making changes in your life. Now, unless you choose to share with me and there is no reason why you should, what you are contemplating going into, I would simply ask you to consider your talents, your abilities, to make a list of these things that you feel 
make you more suitable for this new area or career and that you feel will make you much happier because you pursue this area. And as you write things on paper of why you think you would be good doing this, you will come to know yourself even more and you will be able to take the steps that are necessary to make the changes in yourself because that would be what you would also consider. What do I have to do to go in this different pathway that I am contemplating that I think will make me much happier? And as you contemplate that question, what do I have to do? What will I need to learn? What do I have to cultivate within myself to make this successful, a successful pathway for myself? then you will know that this is the right thing for myself. If you cannot decide that you have the correct skills, that you have the determination, and you have everything that it takes to make this change in yourself, then you must contemplate that also and decide what do I have to change? What do I have to do? And once you have done that, when you know that you can do that, that you can be successful in making this change because you already know what kind of actions you will take in order to, uh, to facilitate this change, then you, can, uh, you will move forward with confidence and you will be successful. Does that help you? Yes, thank you. You are most welcome. Are there other questions? I have a question, please. Um, yes, I'm course. wondering if um, my soulmate is currently someone that is in my life that I am in communication with or that I know, or if it's someone I have not yet met. Well, you see, there is a misconception that you have a soulmate. And generally what is thought is that this is the perfect person that will complement yourself in such a perfect way that you will um, be very happy together. Um, not everyone comes into an incarnation with a soulmate in mind that they will meet this person and they will have this addition to their life. And so I certainly cannot say whether you, at this point in time, whether you have made that decision before you incarnated. So, although if you wish to give me your name, um, I can contemplate and see if, if that type of a decision was made um, or whether or not you know the person that is there. Mm -hmm. But I do not think that will be helpful to yourself. And so I want to ask you uh, to ask yourself why you are looking for a soulmate. Many people decide they would like, um, they'll feel they have a karmic relationship to be with someone. And I would say that in spite of popular literature, that frequently such relationships are very difficult. How do you get along with your parents? How do you get along with your siblings? Most everyone experiences some difficulty with parents and some difficulty with siblings. This is because most often these are karmic relationships that you have chosen to come together in this lifetime to be of service and help to one another. This does not always mean that it is harmonious. It merely means that you are giving one another the opportunity to grow. And sometimes growth is forced through discord. The easy pathway, the pathway where everything comes easily is an illusion or the relationship that says that everything will be easily we will be in agreement on the majority of the things we need to decide that will be in agreement 
with so many things, our life will be happy and harmonious. And this is not true. It is an illusion that there can be such, such a relationship. You see, the most nurturing relationships are ones in which people help one another by working through their problems together. They come to new realizations together. Those beautiful marriages that you see, which appear to be harmonious and happy on the outside, may be harmonious and happy in the inside. But it comes about through an inner discipline of knowing that I wish the welfare and the good of my partner. And what benefits him must also benefit me, or what benefits her must also benefit me. We need to help one another, to facilitate one another, to make, help us make correct decisions, to take actions which are in our own best interest. And this is not an easy, excuse me, an easy pathway for what's in my best interest might not be in your best interest, even when we are in a wonderful relationship that normally uplifts and nurtures one another. We may have quite divergent ideas of our needs. And my need, you may not be aware of my need, and I may not be aware of your needs. And so there must be communication to talk about needs. And when needs are mutually exclusive, excluding, yes, yes. Mutually, I am not coming out with it correctly. Sometimes the needs of people are opposite one another or cannot encompass one another. But how do you find a solution when each of you needs something that appears to be opposite the other person? Where do you find the compromise? Where do you find the correct action? And so this is where growth is. This is where love is, and this is where the kind of relationship you are thinking, thinking and desiring develops. It is not something that you can automatically join and have come into your life and experience your Prince Charming, your perfect mate in every regard, because it is highly unlikely there is another individual that spontaneously and of his or her own, uh, own thoughts and being wants to help or wants to, man to manifest exactly the things that you wish to manifest. And so your wants and your desires may be very different. And it is only up to you to work at coming to those compromises that nurture both of you in such a way that you have a happy relationship. So when you ask me whether your perfect mate is found among your friends or you have not met them, I can look to see that, but it would not benefit you because you must come to that decision yourself. Which of my friends do I, am I most compatible with? Which of the people I know we seem to get along well together? Who can I speak to? Who do I regard, highly regard, have great respect for? Does that person respect me? These are the things of which a wonderful relationship is made not some karmic agreement that was made when you were in spirit, but that which you create while you are in manifestation. I'm sorry, I think 
I am probably disappointing you, but I wish you to take these words and think about them to, and to just go forward and be a loving person. That is someone who gives love generously, who gives of themselves generously. For these will attract to you many people who want to be with you for that which you bring to them. And in this way, you will have your choice of many individuals who wish to be with you. You see, everyone wants to be loved. You want to be loved. You want someone who appreciates all your good qualities. You want someone who will work with you to create the things that you want. Knowing this is what attracts people to one another, you can go forth and give that interest, give respect, help other individuals through your words and actions. You do not have to sacrifice yourself, and I would not want you to do so and spend it just helping others, but be loving in your attitude toward others. Wish other people well. Do what you can to help without hurting yourself in any way. And you will find someone will come along who appreciates what you are and what you have given. And this could be your perfect mate. I hope that is helpful. Yes, thank you very much. That was beautiful. Thank you. You are most welcome. Are there other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, it's about the concept of pennies from heaven. Last week, my sister and I each found three pennies on the ground, like right around the same exact time. And we wanted to know if like it was the, if that's what it was and who put them there. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure I can look into that. Um, the concept, well, it is a lovely song, Pennies from Heaven. Um, and it is allegorical, of course, because they are speaking blessings from heaven. Your three pennies were wonderful that they should come into your life for you and your sister at, the, at about the same time in the same location that you should simultaneously find a gift of pennies. I cannot say if they came from anyone in particular, but it is wonderful that it happened to you. Now, the pennies from heaven thought is the blessings from heaven, is that you can manifest many good blessings in your life. Like you manifested three pennies because you were alert to what was around you. And so you saw this gift of pennies. And who knows who dropped them there? They got there and you saw them and you were the benefactor of them. And so same it is with, with blessings. Blessings come when you take the right actions and you have the right attitudes, that you are always willing to um, be aware of all the good things in your life. And when you're aware of the good things in your life, it seems like blessings multiply and come more and more into your everyday life. It is a habit to get into, that's usually referred to as the attitude of gratitude. It is a lovely liming, rhyming of two words, but the idea that it brings forth is that when you have an attitude of gratitude, when you look for the blessings that fall into your life, you find many more blessings. They keep coming for you because you are alert and aware for them to come. You see them and you um, utilize them when they come to you. That is what is called attracting to yourself, the law of attraction. And I'm sure you have heard about the law of attraction. 
it says that like attracts like. So if you in your consciousness knows that you attract blessings from many other people, whether it's the blessing of friendship, whether it's the blessing of an invitation on a day when you have nothing to do and now you have a, a nice event to attend, whether it's the blessing of being invited to dinner or someone giving you a sandwich when you're hungry because they didn't want theirs anymore, but you wanted one and, and there it came to you. You can set up the vibration to bring many good things into your life by adopting that attitude of gratitude and knowing that things always come into your life. If you have the idea that you are a lucky person because good things happen to you spontaneously, you will be lucky. You will see it happen. By simply saying, I am lucky in every way, every day something lucky happens to me, you will discover that it is happening to you more and more as you confirm that you are lucky, more and more as you know that you are lucky and you are self-confident that you are lucky and that if you get a lottery ticket, you are sure to win at least $2 every time because you are such a lucky person. You may not win the jackpot, but you will not lose your money. It always will work out for you. Do you understand? It becomes an attitude, a way of thinking, a way of being. And this is how the law of attraction works. You decide what you want in your life, whether it's pennies from heaven, signs of love from someone who has passed over. If you consider finding a penny a sign of love from your grandmother or your aunt or someone that you love who has passed over, you will find yourself finding many pennies because you will have this demonstration of love from those who are in spirit. But it is something you have to decide this is what you are getting. And I am so happy that you found those three pennies and that your sister found three pennies. Take them to mean whatever you wish them to mean. It is not necessary for me to tell you they came from your great aunt Jenny, that who is saying she loves you. It is not necessary. You just know that these were tokens of love that have come to you from spirit. And that is all that you need. And continue to manifest that into your life. For then you will be very, very happy because you will have this continual affirmation that people love you. I hope that's good for you, that answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. Good. Are there other questions? Yes, Rankar. Hi, hi Rankar, this is uh, Soham. And I have my dad with me also, Mahesh. Yes, hi Soham, hi Mahesh. Hi. And for those who are online, we have known one another for many years. Yes. <laughs> we, we just uh, moved across the country a few years back. So, but this is a really nice format. Uh, thank you. Thank you and Bob for hosting this format, which allows us to call in. Yes. So, um, my dad has been listening. I've been in uh, work meetings, but <laughs> um, so the question um, we want to, we, we ask you was, um, so um, I was listening to a couple of um, recent, um, uh, uh, I guess, recent clips from Abraham Hicks, um, from, from, from uh, Esther Hicks, you know, the spirit of Abraham. Um, yes, I'm very aware. And, um, uh, you know, Abraham was explaining that um, this, this situation that we have is actually kind of, it, it's laying a foundation for much better things to come and it's uh it, it will change many people's lives positively um in the way we 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 look at things um and um other manifestations um uh, for the positive um and <clears throat> I, I myself am enjoying working from home <laughs> um and i wouldn't mind doing this um <clears throat> you know more more regularly in the future 
um, things like that, I guess. But um, would you would you be able to elaborate on some of the positive changes that may be coming um, as as it responds to many people's uh, many people's desires for change? Yes, of course, of course. And yes, this is one of the unique situations that has happened as a result of the fact that um, you are all being forced to um, socially distance yourself from individuals, from one another. And this has stopped, uh, made it almost impossible for businesses to uh, who have offices, more people work closely together to continue to sustain themselves and have had to find new ways of working. One of which is similar to this meeting that we are all in at this time, that uh, this developed as a result of having to stay socially isolated and that this church um, could not sponsor its usual meetings and decided that they would do uh, this type of a meeting to keep people engaged and give them something to do. It is both a matter of self-preservation for the church, but it is also helpful to those who are at home looking for things to do or looking for new information. And I might take just a moment to plug Thursday's meeting, which will be called Angel Chat. And the speaker, who is Reverend Lucia Cochran, will be speaking about angels and relationships with angels. But to get on to your question, you have already seen one benefit that comes from working at home. You do not have to commute. There are many people who are now working effectively from home. And because this change was forced upon them, uh, forced upon companies, they allowed it and needed to embrace it in order to continue in business. And so they are seeing that it is working and working perhaps to their advantage because some workers are happier with what they are doing at home. And they take the, um, this brings a good attitude toward working together because people are helping one another um, and just getting along well because there is actual more space. And because you do not have time to congregate at the cooler, so to speak, to have someone stopping at your desk to interrupt you for, for uh, light chat, they are see being, see, even seeing that sometimes their workers have become more efficient working from home, something they never thought would happen. And so this is what they are using. They, you are correct in that uh, there are many changes that are coming. As the uh, previous questioner asked about the fact that she is contemplating her changing her lifestyle, her work, and what she is doing for a living. This comes about because she has been paused from what she was doing. She is somewhat relieved of the need to, to work every day doing something. There have many people who over the years have taken jobs because they needed to work. And it was neither something they loved to do, it was something they could do, might not have been stimulating to themselves, might have not even have been within the, their areas of interest. However, they have been working and working effectively because they are smart, intelligent, and they knew what they needed to do and they got it done. Maybe they're excellent, efficient workers, but now there is a pause. And so what do you start thinking about? Other things you might do perhaps, other ways to earn money, other ways to be successful. And where can I do things that are more fulfilling to myself? So this pause caused people to turn introspective and see within themselves that which they wish to uh, to find out more about themselves. 
And this is always good. To know yourself is very important. It allows you to take care of your own needs and to move forward in life and to create uh, and to actively create a life that you enjoy. What other things that result as, as of this? There can be so many changes in so many ways, uh, simply because everyone has been forced to do things differently than they had before. We could, you could not go to, you cannot go to the store and grocery shop. Well, you can, but some people do not wish to have that lack of social distance around themselves as crowded grocery stores do. And, uh, and now, since in some areas they have even said that the number of people allowed in a store at any one time is limited so that there is plenty of space for individuals. So these individuals perhaps began shopping online, something they never did before. Maybe they're banking online, something they never did before. They may have been reluctant to make these changes in their life, even though they have known individuals who have embraced them and praised them. But now more and more people are adopting them. And when you have um, less people driving on the roads, there is less pollution in the air because people are being, uh, cannot get an abundance of food and groceries as they might have before. There have been, they have more conservative in their use of foods. There is less waste. And so there is less garbage. There are many ways which are being affected by this change and many of them are beneficial and many of them will continue. The price of oil and gasoline products, those things have come down partially because people are not traveling as much. And as such, there is less demand and there is an abundant supply. So, having, paying less for gasoline or heating oil or those types of products only helps the family budget. And so perhaps you have more money, discretionary money to spend in different areas, but you cannot go out right now. So therefore you are not spending it. So maybe you are saving money if you're lucky enough to still be working. And so the opportunities through this social isolation phase of the way you are choosing to treat this virus and this environment at this time has many benefits and people will be looking at those benefits. At the moment, sometimes many people are just looking at the difficulties. I cannot do what I want to do. I cannot, I, perhaps have lost my job, which is a really terrible thing for most of these people because they still have rents to pay and utilities to pay and they still have to buy food. But your government is making an effort to alleviate some of these things for the time being till people can get back to work. But there are many people who are benefiting by what is happening. And when they have the opportunity in the future, this will also uh, contribute to bringing back your economy because some people have been saving money. They did not know they would be able to save because they are not busy spending it. The limitation um, which stops you from going places often stops you from spending money. Oh, there are those there who are doing more shopping online. So it is not helping them because they are spending just as much money. But for some people, they are accumulating savings, which is a blessing for themselves. And they will be able to put the savings to good use. It is just many opportunities are here. And what kind of changes will you have in the future? Well, you can already see that there will be more ability to work from home 
and um, perhaps you will not need to conduct as many roads because if there are less cars on the roads, there will be less traffic and less traffic should lead to less accidents, but it is not yet doing so. You need a change in human behavior for that. So I think that has answered your question, unless you have another one you would like to ask. Uh, so Rankar, um, my dad is asking, uh, he, he's just wondering how the, um, the, I guess the opening of the economy will work um, and if, if people are not staying at home, it, let's say the governments open up the economy, um, lift the stay at home orders, and then people start going to work, um, will that cause a resurgence in the number of, of the, infection, the, the infected peoples? I understand the question. While there may be some resurgence, it is not going to be onerous. What you have already seen is that although there were large numbers of people who have transitioned at this time, there were large numbers of people who became ill at this time, that this is somewhat a matter of perception. Many people the numbers of deaths have increased, but in your country, a very many, many people, many people transition in every day. It's just you are simply not informed. That 765 people died in New York State yesterday. No one tells you, but that number, while it is high and higher than average, is not unusual for hundreds of people to die in a state every day. They are dying of heart disease, they are dying of cancer, they are dying in accidents. They are dying for many reasons. Some of them are simply old, old age and various parts of themselves have stopped functioning and so they transition. But no one is telling you a year ago, no one would have told you that four or five or 600 people in your state died that day, transitioned that day. You would simply not have known it was normal. You just, no one bothered to tell you. So there is somewhat of an illusion about what is happening. Um, it can sound worse than it is. So the question though, is when we take, when you remove the social distancing, will the number of people coming down with the virus may go up, but the number of deaths probably will not because they have learned much about treating this infection of this virus. And it is becoming easier and easier to bring about healing when people bring about the virus. You do not know because they do not tell you how many people were released from hospital today because they had overcome the virus and they were sent home. It could have been just as many as those who have died. It could even have been more or many people are in quarantine in their own homes, but they are not dying. They are not so ill, but they report the number of cases, newly diagnosed cases, and the number of deaths. So this is what you think of. We have another so many thousand of new cases. We have another so many hundred of deaths. But how many of these new cases will result in transition? 
it is getting smaller and smaller. They don't tell you how many people came down with a cold today. Because it is a common thing. And many people are experiencing colds. In California, they had a very, very bad flu season. I think in retrospect, if you think about it, many of these flu deaths that you had in California were virus deaths. And while you might bemoan the situation of the flu in California that brought about so many deaths, you do not know what it was. And what they said also was that many of the deaths are brought about into people who are elderly or have underlying health conditions, which made it difficult for them to fight the virus. And so the virus was too strong. So I do not wish you to worry about the number of a resurgence of the virus. If things are lifted in another two weeks, you will not see a resurgence of the virus of anything that is worth talking about. Yes, you may see some, but already it is getting beyond the time when this virus can infect that many more people and cause transition. That's great to know. Are there any other questions? Yes, I had one about the terrorists. I believe they live in mostly camps and stuff. I was wondering if they are really taking this serious or are they just turning their nose up and saying Allah will save them or whatever they say? <laughs> well, um, the terrorist countries do not have very good healthcare systems. And they have been quite affected by this virus in some of the countries. It has caused a, a big problem in their populations, which of course did not just hit terrorists, but was not discriminating against terrorists or other people in particular. You know, it is quite um, a loving, I embrace everyone virus. <laughs> and I bring about the same results without thinking about it for others. And so it is, uh, these countries have already, um, and are still suffering from the contagion of this virus. I do not know how that will affect terrorists, but for the moment, they have not been doing any terrorist activities because many of them have become ill and many of them have uh, uh, and have ill family members and there are other things. The illness has disrupted them from their reign of terror. And so they are just not thinking in that regard at this time. Now, some of these I can tell you in their hearts are deciding that um, it was all the infidels that caused this problem, just as in the past, when there have been plagues and other difficulties, other societies have decided it was the Jews that covered, carried, created all these problems because people like to blame other people. And someone else is the cause of their suffering. It is not because they have behaved badly or that they have done bad things or that nature has manifested a new disease or a new plague um, or whatever has come forth to cause difficulties. And so in those countries, there will be many people who will be blaming, but the majority of the people, they are not terrorists. They just want to live a life with family, family celebrations, marriages, births, and of course, there are always deaths or transitions. And so they have, uh, that's where most of the people want. The terrorists are what the terrorists are. And they have been as much consumed by this virus as everyone else. 
yeah. Are there any questions? Wondering about the, uh, the terrorists in particular, because I was wondering if they realized, or they must realize that this is all over the world. The infidels are getting it as long as well as they are. And is this gonna, you know, put on a light bulb or something and say, hey, you know, <laughs> it's not them doing it. They wouldn't be doing it to themselves. Um, they are not thinking of that. Oh. Terrorists are terrorists because they have developed a, a plan of thought um, and a way of being um, where they, um, they are either religious zealots, but for some of them um, also it is just a way to, um, to justify uh, bad behavior that they would like to do. Uh, perhaps they are angry at whatever has gone on in their life. And this gives them an opportunity to vent that anger on others saying, you were the cause of my bad life. You were the cause of why I was poor. You were the cause of why I, I did not have enough to eat. You were the cause. Blaming other people for what has happened in their life without looking to themselves or their situations or their governments as which cause frequently much of these difficulties because governments do have a large effect upon your life, whether or not it is easy for you to work and be productive and earn everything you need by the fruit of your labor or not is frequently determined by governments with kings and hierarchies that wish to keep power and uh, material goods for themselves because it makes them feel good. And so they don't give others the opportunity to be and to manifest the good things that people want in their lives. Are there other questions? It's getting late. It's getting late, is it time to stop? About 10 of nine. So we are almost to the end of this evening. Um, is there a last question that anyone has to ask? And I would guess since no one has no, no, someone's, come up. someone's speaking. This is Doug. I just had a question. Do you, can you answer a question about somebody? Uh, uh, my wife who has passed. I hear someone speaking, yes, but I yes, he is the speaker. Can you please repeat your question and speak more loudly? Um, can you uh, answer any question or say anything about somebody who has passed? My wife that had passed two years ago. You lost your wife two years ago? Yes. And um, you wish to uh, be in communication with her? I can, I can try to make it... Uh, um, I can try to speak to her or bring her here for you. Um, may I have her name, please? Her name is Kathy with a K. Kathy with a K. And the last name? Booker. H. Booker? Bar Booker. Okay, one moment, please. I will see if I can find her. Thank you. May I ask your name? My name is Doug. Doug, okay, thank you. I have asked her to come forward and we have a tenuous connection here um, is there a particular question you wish to ask her, or do you just want to know that she is okay? Um, if she's okay, or if she's mad at me? <laughs> Certainly. One moment, please. Usually, Juana does these things, but I will do this for you. Uh, 
it, well, she said that she is not mad at you. And of course she is okay, because I will tell you this, that um, transition uh, into the spirit world is, um, while it may come as a shock for some people, it, once you are here, it is um, a wonderful experience. I do not know how else to say it because it does not relate in terms into the physical world. And so, um, the question of whether she is mad at you, even if there was any question at the time of her transition, whether she was angry with you, this has all disappeared from her consciousness after what is the equivalent of your length of time. She is very content where she is, and she actually just sends love to you. Um, she is... Uh, she is expressing that um, she can see and knows that there was much love in your relationship, even if at times it did not seem that way. But yeah. she knows it now. And that um, that is all she does is, is send you love um, and a gratitude. That is what she is sending to you at this time. And to, to know that um, she loves you still. And oh, it, is, it is quite easy uh, in spirit to, to, to send, uh, to give love and send love to you. And so she is doing so at this time. I guess they don't have emotions like we do here. No, we do not. We are all happy because we are totally well and complete in every way. There is no, nothing missing from ourselves as a whole. When you are in the physical world, you are not aware of the, of the, uh, the wholeness that you have and the perfection that you have because you are subject to experiencing the things around you, the world around you. So that if we take something simple like the temperature outside, you may determine that it is too hot or it's too cold. Or maybe you think it is just perfect today, but there are other days which were too hot or too cold. Your physical bodies have many sensations which disrupt your mind and your consciousness when you do not have to deal with the physical world around you, when you are in spirit, you are perfect. You are whole. You are complete in every way. And you experience communion with others. That is meaning the, the relationships with others are such that there is no misunderstandings, that everything is easily known and understood so that life, existence, is perfect just by what it is every day, not by what you do not by what you think. It just is perfect in every way. And so that must finish our evening. I hope you have enjoyed those who have been listening, those who ask questions. I hope you are satisfied with your answers. And we invite you to come back next week. And remember, tomorrow will be this church will be sponsoring it's healing session for those who would like to be in attendance on that. There will be, you will be able to join that meeting. And on the following evening, there will be a discussion on angels. We give you all our blessings.
Good night. Thank you. I am back. Ron Clark can say good night, but I get to say good night too. So remember, I love you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.